Coming up on Ag Week TV, many farmers and ranchers are coming off a season of severe drought. We'll see what may be in store this year. New biotech labeling laws are set to go into effect this summer. We'll give you a glimpse of what they might entail coming up. On the Soil Health Minute, we look at how splitting your field can help you manage salts. Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Michelle Rook. The drought hit hard last year in the Northern Plains. In fact, some farmers and ranchers regarded it as among the worst in recent memory. In some areas, those dry conditions are still lingering. Jenny Schleck checks on Southwest North Dakota to see how producers are recovering. Everything's behind. We did catch a little bit of rain last week and that's really helped, but we're still concerned. Derek Frank and his family run about a thousand head of cattle and raise a diversified mix of crops near Shields, North Dakota. They were hit hard by the drought last year. Still, they had enough hay to last the winter. We did okay until the spring. The, the grass is so slow we're still feeding, so our hay supplies are dwindling quickly. Because of the drought last year, Frank sold off some cattle early and cut back on breeding replacement heifers. There is some improvement in moisture levels in southwest North Dakota, as well as most of South Dakota and Montana. But in northern North Dakota, the drought is intensifying. First of all, it's not just a moisture deficit. Because even if we were normal right now for precip received, we still have a hangover effect. So we have to see those impacts get reduced. And so those places where we had the most severe drought last summer, we're seeing a little more tenacious hanging on to those impacts. Even in places that look green, subsoil moisture is still short, and many areas are far from over the drought. Yes, it's pretty and green across the countryside, but without higher soil moisture values, we need to have that repetitive quarter inch, third of an inch, half an inch of rainstorm in order to keep the grass growing and viable. In Bismarck, this is Jenny Schlecht for Ag Week. Jenny will have more on the drought outlook for this season in the next Ag Week magazine. The late spring and delayed planting season has caused a shortage of anhydrous ammonia and other fertilizers in North Dakota and Minnesota. It's been compounded by high water levels on the Mississippi River, which limited barge movement of product to wholesalers, plus the lack of truckers to haul fertilizer. To help, the governors of both states have signed executive orders waiving hours of service for drivers. The waiver runs to the end of the month in North Dakota and until June 16th in Minnesota. Urban development is devouring farmland at an alarming rate. A new study shows 31 million acres of farmland were lost from 1992 to 2012. That's double the amount previously documented. The loss is irreversibly diminishing the limited supply of farmland, raising serious concerns about food production as well as economic and environmental concerns. The report from the American Farmland Trust finds that a third of the land is some of the nation's best farmland. Farmers and ranchers still use more than 1 billion acres, or 55% of the land in the U.S. You'll soon see new biotech labeling information on food packages at the grocery store. It's a result of the National Bioengineered Food Disclosure Act, which Congress passed in 2016 to avoid a patchwork of state labeling laws, which could have cost food companies and consumers billions of dollars. USDA has released its draft proposal and is working with farm and consumer groups to shape the final rule. USDA's proposal on national biotech labeling starts by defining a bioengineered food or ingredient. This law is to require disclosure of foods that are bioengineered. That means they contain genetic uh, recombinant DNA. Food industry representatives say the rulemaking presents several ways to determine what foods will be covered and what the disclosure will include and look like. The options that are available to a food company are going to be on pack with words, a symbol that is non-disparaging, or electronic disclosure. USDA Undersecretary Greg Ibos says the Ag Marketing Service wants to craft a standard that is straightforward with the help of public input. We'll look forward to the opportunity to listen to not only agriculture in those uh, proposed uh, uh, rules, but also to consumers. Farm groups have also been involved to make sure USDA stays true to the law and preserves this technology. It should help advance information to consumers about the food, 
but do so in a way that does not discriminate against agriculture biotechnology. We're expecting that, that uh, it'll be the, uh, the QR code. Uh, that we had worked so hard uh, to achieve. The deadline for the disclosure standard was July 29th, but Ag Secretary Purdue says it may be delayed. I'm still hoping for this summer, but it does not look like we will meet the, uh, the deadline that uh, we had insisted upon. USDA will take comments through July 3rd. Under the proposal, certain foods, such as those with multiple ingredients, would not be subject to the standard. Coming up on Ag Week TV, planting is getting back on track. We'll have the latest progress report and market outlook after this. For home delivery of Ag Week, log on to agweek.com or call 800-811-2580. Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. Advanced Grain Handling is your regional dealer for grain handler dryers, bins, and accessories. With Grain Handler's continuous mixed flow drying systems, you're capable of high levels of grain dryer efficiency on all types of grain, including seed grain. Advanced Grain Handling also carries West Steel's quality stainless steel products for on-farm and commercial grain storage solutions. Advanced Grain Handling has licensed and trained service techs and a licensed electrical shop. Get a hold of Chad Kylo to find the perfect solution for your farm. I'm one pony, I'm 30, I'm 30, I'm 55, I'm once around the block, 212, pop right here, now I have them times up. If you're thinking about selling a piece of land or you're looking to sell some farm equipment or if you're thinking about a retirement or involved in an estate, give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Steffes way. We think it's a good way. That's how we approach it. If any of those are in your plans, give us a call or go to steffesgroup.com. Learn all about us. Hope to hear from you. At Superior Grain Equipment, we're committed to quality and service, offering you the best in grain storage and dryers for any size operation. Our experts will work with you to determine the most efficient and economical storage solution for your needs. We help protect your bottom line and your future with the industry's best bins and warranties. Make the superior choice for protection today and tomorrow with Superior Grain Equipment. Farmers made good planting progress in the week ending May 13th in all but the northern Midwest. So planting pace on corn is nearly back to normal nationally, ahead on beans and only lagging slightly on spring wheat. U.S. farmers planted another quarter of the corn crop in the week and are caught up to the 63 percent average. Nebraska is slightly ahead, while Iowa and North Dakota are near normal. Minnesota is still lagging 25 percent, with South Dakota behind 40 percent. U.S. soybean planting progress jumped ahead of normal at 35 percent, and that trend follows in Nebraska, with the rest of the region slightly behind. And farmers planted another quarter of the spring wheat crop in the week ending May 13th, just slightly behind the average pace. South Dakota farmers are 80 percent done, while Minnesota and North Dakota have cut up to the five-year averages. And winter wheat conditions improved 2 percent nationally, 5 percent in South Dakota, and 3 percent in Nebraska. Joining us today with a look at crop progress and other market issues and market analysis is Randy Martinson with Martinson Ag in Fargo. Randy, let's talk a little bit about the grain market in terms of the spring rally that we saw. Really, it was kind of tied to South American weather. So that was the first weather thing that the market was focused in on, right? It was, and primarily Argentina. Again, you know, just like we saw a couple years ago, Argentina's pretty big in soybean production and for the most part more on the meal side yeah. and that's really where our strength came from and it's the meal ran the market again early this spring started to cause a little concerns with the drought situation that took place in Argentina and the expectation that 
U.S. meal demand was going to pick up quite large. Uh, and that's really helped to push this market, and it's spilled over into even into our growing season now. All right, so let's talk about that transition now, away from South American weather focus, a little bit more to U.S. weather focus. And we were started off with the planting season a little bit bumpy, but now it doesn't look like planting progress is really much of a concern to the market. You know, it's really not. And it, it it's tough because we can plant so much of a crop in such a quick period of time up here in the Northern Plains, well, in the U.S. in general. I think we were getting 25 to 30% planted in a week, especially when you look at the Corn Belt side. And we've had decent weather for planting in a majority of the U.S. So it's not such a big issue at this point. Okay, but when you look at the northern tier of states, the market is already thinking that we may see a shift from some corn acres here into soybeans, and we're starting to trade that even with some corn soybean spreads, aren't we? We are, and the part of that is because of how wet it is, and especially southern Minnesota and also into eastern South Dakota, where we really don't have a lot of progress, and probably none, pro no progress at all in some of those areas. A lot of that, we'll see some more soybeans in that area, and also up here in the northern plains, we've seen a you know a little concerns with availability of fertilizer, some of those guys are going to be switching some of those acres over as well to soybeans. So you know, we're going to see that some switching. Just how much, we're not quite sure yet. All right. What about spring wheat? Because we're past May 15th. That's usually a psychological time where we have a cutoff and guys start to switch over to other crops. What do you anticipate we're gonna see for switches? I expect we'll probably see a quarter of a million, maybe a half a million acres switch over of spring wheat, mainly because like you said, a lot of guys don't wanna plant the spring wheat after the 15th because of yield kind of drops a little bit after that time frame. Some will switch to corn if they do have the fields fertilized, but a lot more towards beans. And beans have held up decent and still given a good return. All right, so let's also talk about the funds because they're pretty much long in most of the grains. And as we move into the time when we have a weather market, are they going to defend those longs? You know, I think they will. And I, part of it, you know, we saw some of that here this week even, especially in the Minneapolis market where a little dry concerns have brought the funds back in buying again. We did see it in corn as well uh, this week. Soybeans, not so much as we started to see maybe a little too good of planting conditions and a little bit ahead of pace for planting concerns. Uh, so it pulled a little bit out of the bean market but overall you know once we get into later June early July they're going to be defending those positions. All right and let's just talk quickly about cattle we've had this big disconnect between futures and cash cash mm. is starting to come down but we also have futures going down as well are we going to test those spike lows and is this wall of cattle really coming? You know I've been one that does not thinking that that wall is coming I think our early winter or late winter early spring weather leveled things off and we saw poor performance performance in the feedlots. I don't think the cattle are going to be there. But yet the funds and, and the selling just seems to be too great mm -hmm. in that market to overcome. Technically, or we're not looking very good. Fundamentally, we've got positive news to look at. I mean, we've got lower, uh, lighter slaughter weights. Um, the, the slaughter numbers aren't there. So I do think that we'll start to see a little sta stability in that market. It's just going to be a while. All right. Thanks for joining us. Randy Martinson with Martin Sinek here in Fargo, North Dakota. Coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll take a look at how one farmer's managing salts on the Soil Health Minute. But first, will our unsettled weather pattern continue? Your agro weather forecast is next. Microessentials is a premium phosphate product. It's a dry granular product. The main difference with a microessentials type product is you have a homogenous granule for the nitrogen, the sulfur, the phosphorus, and in this case, the zinc is all in one granule. If you ever have a desire or a need to learn more about what does sulfur do within a soybean plant, what does the potassium do for the corn crop, we have microessentials.com. We also have a great resource, cropnutrition.com. Total Ag Industries is the leader in total control. The future of ceramic nozzle technology is here today with the Total Ag Air Induction Turbo Nozzle, the only ceramic triple spray nozzle on the market. Works with all sprayers for better weed control and wheel tracks. Are you ready for a longer lasting sprayer nozzle? Call 701-636-4524 for 10% off your first order or go to TotalAg.com to learn more. 
Get your row crops off to the right start with an early riser Case IH planter from Titan Machinery. Case IH early riser planters feature high-tech yet rugged planter row units that quickly adapt to the toughest seeding conditions, while leaving an optimal seed bed to promote early, uniform plant emergence. Only Case IH early riser planters are designed to leave a flat bottom seed furrow, ensuring consistent seed depth and even emergence. Contact your local Titan Machinery location today for more information on the next generation of planting technology from Case IH. Intelligent farming means more crop from every acre. That starts with smart machines and precision application. Introducing the new Rogator C-Series from Challenger, featuring a newer, smarter, more precise way to apply fertilizers and nutrients, more accurately and more efficiently than ever before, resulting in less overlap and less crop damage, all to make you more productive and more profitable. To find out more, contact Butler Machinery today. Mother Nature finally allowed farmers to get into the field in much of the northwestern Corn Belt, but there are exceptions, as you'll see in this week's crop stops. We start off in Jamestown, North Dakota, where we found Lee Troutman and his dad planting corn. Lee says soil moisture is adequate, and despite the late spring, they've faced far tougher planting conditions than this year. I know we're behind, but I think uh, given the weather and spring that we've had, I think we're doing all right. Um, moisture's good, soil temps are good, so uh, I'm not concerned at this point. We're definitely going to be pushing hard, though, the next couple days. Meanwhile, in southwest Minnesota, Randy Hawes had only been in the field one day when we talked to him. His area received four to five inches of precip in April and May, and he says it's the slowest start to the season in 25 years. The last time I remember being this late was 93. Also, of that are old enough remember what that was like, and... Uh, yeah, that year I didn't get finished planting. And I, I always said that'd be the once in a lifetime. I'm hoping there's not twice in a lifetime. What is the planting outlook for the upcoming week? John has more in this week's forecast. Weather pattern across North America right now really split into two parts, but it's mostly one. And that one part is this ridge of high pressure over the western part of North America. You'll notice the dark blue around and east of Hudson Bay, that standard, still cold enough for snow up in northern Quebec and Labrador. Meanwhile, temperatures are really increasing out here in the west. And as we go through the week ahead, it's going to get quite warm. In fact, I expect by sometime around the middle of the week, starting to see some 90s, maybe near 100 degrees in some parts of the prairie provinces, and that will actually expand back to the northwest. Southwest and the southern plains are getting pretty hot as well, and that's kind of just settling in for the summer. Many spots near 100 degrees. Northern plains generally is going to be fairly warm this week. Now, the ridge will buckle cool air from coming from the Pacific and that will actually enter into the northern plains briefly about the 1st of June but I think that'll be a temporary setback because you'll notice the ridge is rebuilding so as we look ahead to the summer the early part of it anyway we may start out June on a cool note in the northern plains and I'm not sure how long that'll last but I suspect warm weather will be back now rain wise this week looking fairly dry with only spotty showers thunder showers for northern Northern Plains, there will be pockets of rain around. By the end of the week, as we approach the Memorial Day weekend, I think there may be a better chance of getting some rain showers into the Northern Plains and maybe a couple of rounds as we head into next week. There's one about Memorial Day weekend and a second one about midweek. Good chances of rain, but note that ridge building up again in the west, likely to return to some drier weather in early June. So overall, the end of May looking warmer than average. There will be several rain chances. Have to get lucky and get caught up because overall, as we enter summer, we'll probably be mostly drier than we'd like in the Northern Plains. Ag Week is excited to bring you the Ag Week app with useful features and the latest news and information right at your fingertips. Get your Ag Week news, weather, and the latest episodes of Ag Week TV. Plus, see real time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take Ag Week with you wherever you are. Download the Ag Week app today. Luckin Trucks and Parts sells quality used parts for all makes and models. With over 50 acres of trucks and parts and new inventory arriving daily. Family owned and operated since 1966, 
Luckins specializes in the sale of quality used medium to heavy duty truck parts as well as pre-owned trucks, trailers, and construction equipment. If it's on a truck, we got it. Call us today and let us get you your part. Get ready for the biological revolution. Enhanced by Ag Concepts is a scientifically designed foliar fertilizer formulated to quickly deliver essential nutrients to your crops for the greatest possible yields. I had a hail incident and I only had maybe beans that were four inches tall. I put some Enhance out. That seemed to really bring my beans back. I got 40 bushel beans compared to a zero. That's the best dollar ever spent. Join the biological revolution with Enhance by Ag Concepts. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley source for Batco. Mayo Manufacturing, your Red River Valley Batco dealer. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. The Ag Week Soil Health Minute is sponsored by the North Dakota Corn Council and the North Dakota Soybean Council. There's no easy button for dealing with salinity, but farmers are finding ways to manage those areas using knowledge of the field and the tools they have available. In this Soil Health Minute, Dr. Abby Wick shows us how one farmer is doing just that in his field. When it comes to managing salinity, sometimes you just have to split the field and use the tools that you have. So what do I mean by split the field? Well, in this case, this farmer is choosing to put soybean on the north part of the field that is not salt affected, and he's using cereal rises tool on the part of the field that is salt affected. Last fall, he came through here and he looked at where his weed pressures were. He decided to use vertical tillage as a tool to knock down the weeds, and he came in immediately after and he seeded 60 pounds of cereal rye. And using 60 pounds of cereal rye, his intent is to harvest this for seed, and then follow it with another cover crop to manage moisture. As we take a closer look to where vertical tillage was used and where it wasn't used, you can see that the rye is established well in both areas. But in this case, this farmer really wanted to knock down the weeds and use vertical tillage to do that. If you use vertical till, come right in like he did with a cereal rye and get it seeded immediately after tilling. Sometimes having the wheat stubble there can be helpful for capturing snow to leach the salts further into the profile. As farmers, you know your fields best. You know where the problem areas are and you know what tools you have to manage those areas. So take a look at your field. Don't think about farming it as an entire field, but think about splitting it and then using your tools accordingly. Corn and soybeans dominate crop production in much of the region, but wheat remains a major crop in northwest Minnesota. The weather in that area is conducive to growing wheat, but there are always new ways to improve the crop. The Minnesota Wheat On-Farm Research Network is helping growers be more profitable. Among the things they're studying this season include seeding rate trials, top dressing nitrogen, a fungicide trial, and increasing protein. One thing that we're really diving into um, is with this protein analyzer research. So we have two on-combine protein analyzers which uh, measure protein on the combine uh, as you're harvesting and create a protein map that's very similar to a yield map. I'm hoping that the research, the growers will, will use the information and, and tailor, tailor their crop to it. They expect to work with about 30 farmers this season. What's an important enough topic to keep kids coming back for 25 years? In Kidder County, it's farm safety. Levisol is the most advanced nutrient efficiency solution, making phosphorus, zinc, and other key micronutrients more available to the plant. With three modes of action, it unlocks the nutrients in the soil, it makes the nutrients that it's applied with more available, and it is mobile in the plant for season-long activity. For more information, talk with your agronomy partner or visit wcdst.com. DTE is your headquarters for flatbeds and service bodies for your truck. Whether you need to haul bales, heavy commercial equipment, or take every tool with you, 
DTE has the truck equipment you need. We have over 200 units on hand or will custom build a flatbed or service body on your truck. Like this Dewey's bale bed with dual lift cylinder arms. Lift load and handle your bales with ease. When you need help at the farm, your business, or in the oil patch, count on DTE. DTE, let us build a truck for you. Advanced Biofuel for America's diesel engines is clean burning and made from renewable sources like soybean oil. Biodiesel fuel works in any diesel engine, reducing emissions, helping us breathe cleaner air. Biodiesel adds value to North Dakota soybeans, creating jobs, improving the environment, increasing our energy independence. Biodiesel, it starts with soybeans, it's fueling America. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week Magazine. Reaching over 70,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Ag Week is excited to bring you the Ag Week app with useful features and the latest news and information right at your fingertips. Get your Ag Week news, weather, and the latest episodes of Ag Week TV. Plus, see real time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take Ag Week with you wherever you are. Download the Ag Week app today. Agriculture is one of the most dangerous industries in the nation. Many adults are hurt or killed in farm accidents every year. But the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say thousands of young people are also injured on farms. As Jenny Schlecht found, for years several groups have been coming together in Kidder County, North Dakota, to teach kids how to be safe on the farm. For 25 years, groups in Kidder County, North Dakota have been coming together to put on an important program to teach kids about farm safety. It's so important that people from several groups and agencies came together this day, including the Farm Bureau, NDSU Extension, the Highway Patrol, and local law enforcement and fire departments. Because it saves lives. They're not just teaching farm safety. It's everything from stranger danger and fire safety to anti-bullying. Julie Decree has been running the program for five years, and she says it's not just the kids who benefit. Yes, every once in a while you get kids that come and say, I told my parents this and that, and so yeah, it travels on to the parents too. The power takeoff can be one of the most dangerous things on a farm. Getting caught in it can quickly lead to death or the loss of a limb. It can happen in the blink of an eye. So Cody Mack and his friends from the Medina High School FFA want to make sure these kids understand they need to be extremely careful around the PTO and other large equipment. It's very important because they're young kids, they're inexperienced, you know, and uh, here in North Dakota, you know, there's a lot of kids that are on the farm and they have a lot of responsibility. So they need to know how to be safe with that as well, being they are at such a young age. It happens all so quick. It's something, you know, that we do every day on the farm and we don't even think about it. Students appear to be having fun while learning valuable information about staying safe on the farm. When I go back home, I'm going to be aware of the things around me and just be careful. Farm safety is really fun and it's very useful. In Steele, North Dakota, this is Jenny Schlecht for Ag Week. The Progressive Ag Foundation helps put on farm safety days across the country. If you're interested in putting one on in your community, visit progressiveag.org. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or download the Ag Week app. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. See you next week.